Scripture reading is from Romans 8, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if, you, but if the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live, because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs to, of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in this suffering, in order that we may also share in his glory. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. So I'm going to have to file that away as a little trick in the like pastor's toolkit for the future. So in our scripture reading for today, we find Paul writing his letter to the people of Rome. And in his writing, Paul is discussing the idea that once you have God in your life, once the Holy Spirit has entered into you, you are no, li no longer living a life that is normal. At least not what society would say is a normal life. But once this change comes upon you, your life, your old life, is dead. The wants, the needs, the labels of who you once were are now gone. And if you have truly moved into a life dedicated to Christ, then you are doing what is pleasing to him. And that is now what is your driving purpose in your life. But as we read a little further on in Romans chapter 8, Paul talks about how, we, how we, if we have accepted Jesus as our Savior and the Holy Spirit is living with us, then we have become children of God. And as I was working on the sermon this week, and boy, I sure hope it makes sense to everyone because it was a rough, rough week. I was struck with this thought. I wonder how many things in my life, how many labels that I've been given throughout my life, other than just child of God. And you might be thinking to yourself right now, well, pastor, I have some things that I would love to call you right now. But I considered these things that I would have believed are the most important things that I call myself. So as I was thinking about this, I thought about what are the labels that I would put upon myself that are very important to me? And I thought about the things that I consistently pray for time and time again. And some of the things that I ask God each and every day to help me with are to be a good husband, a good father, and a good son. Now perhaps these are things that most of you have prayed for in your life, though slightly different, right? Um, I doubt any of the ladies out there are praying to be a good son. Um, but something along those lines. And as I was thinking about these things, I considered how could I possibly measure that I'm doing the things that Christ wants for me in these areas. So I thought about it from a biblical standpoint. And here are a few examples for each. I pray to be a good husband. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. So if that means to me that you love them, that means to me that you love them with your whole heart, with everything that you have. And so that is what I strive to do. Now you may uh, recognize that part of the verse, or I'm sure you're familiar with the part of the verse that comes before that. Women submit to your husbands, right? That is the part that we almost always hear but it's important, husbands, that we remember the next part is love your wives as Christ loved the church. Be a good father. Also, coming from Ephesians, fathers, do not exasperate your children. 
Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Now, I do my best here, (laughs) but I'm sure that my children will tell you that at times I am quite exasperating to them. Be a good son. This one's pretty easy. Honor your father and your mother. So I wondered how these things can be done and how I can achieve them by myself. And then as I was thinking about it, I can't do them by myself. Oh, sure, I can try. But if I'm really going to live into them, if I'm really trying to do my best in these areas, and also as a child of God, I have to be continually checking myself and making sure that I'm following the instructions given to me from God. You see, some of these labels that we put on ourselves can be good. All those things are positives in our lives, right? Or at least in my life. Being a father, being a husband, and being a son, and doing my best to do those things in in a way that makes God happy. But, we have to consider this other part of labeling. The other part of it is, there are labels that get put on us by others. And they tend not to be as positive as the ones that we put upon ourselves. So I thought about what other labels people may have put on me throughout my life. And I have to tell you, the list I came up with here, nowhere near as positive as those first three. But I tried to be honest. So an angry young man with nothing but rage in his heart. I'm sure people have, and perhaps some still do, consider me to be a loudmouth. Perhaps people may have, and this is not perhaps, people have called me arrogant or self-centered. Things like unworthy or broken. I've been the kid on the wrong side of the tracks. I've been the kid that went to the wrong school. I've been the kid from the wrong family in that particular town. You see, any one of these things could, it, could have been used to describe me at some point in my life. And quite honestly, on a bad day, some of these things are true right now. But the labels that get put upon us by others are often unfair. But they can be hard for us to shake away from ourselves. It's difficult for us to overcome these things once they've been put upon us. You know, one of the great things about living in a small town is it seems like everybody knows everybody. And also, one of the terrible things about living in a small town is it feels like everybody knows everybody. You see, you might find in your life, people will put these labels on you uh, throughout your life for whatever reason. And it's hard to shake them once they're there. So hard that maybe you've just taking them on as your own version and put them on yourself as well. You might constantly feel that you're fighting a battle against the person that you were at one point in your life. And you might feel as that no matter what you do, there's no way you're ever going to be able to get that label off of you. Well, I want you to take heart because there is a label that God wants to give to you. You see, he wants to call you his child. He doesn't want you to suffer under the mistakes that you've made in the past. And he doesn't want you to carry the burden of what others have put upon you. No, God wants you, and he wants wants to call you his child. He wants you to accept Jesus and be filled with the Holy Spirit so that you are no longer bound by that past life. He He wants to take you under his wing, and he wants to watch your life begin again. And he wants you to be able to look at you and say, that's my kid. You know, they aren't perfect, but I love them anyways. See, God wants you to put that old life and those old labels to the sword and be born again. And the truly amazing thing about all of this is, it doesn't matter what you've done, and it doesn't matter what you will do. Now, don't get me wrong here. I'm not telling you to go out and live a life full of sin from this point on. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is God wants to call you his child because of his wonderful grace. There's nothing that you, there's nothing that I, or there's nothing that anyone else can ever do to be worthy of it or to earn it. 
We don't deserve his grace, but he wants to give it to us anyways. So if you are tired of living under what others have been calling you your whole life, now is the time to throw away that label because it no longer applies to you if you've accepted Jesus into your heart. And if you're tired of living under the things that you've labeled yourself your whole life, now's the time to throw that label away. And if you have forgotten that you are a child of God, now is the time to remember. So I pray that today be the day that you give yourself to God. I pray that today be the day that you accept for yourself that new label of child of God. And I pray that this is the day that you remember his grace or you accept his grace for the first time. So if you're feeling so led today, as we go through our final songs today, I ask that you would come forward to the altar, either to ask to become a child of God for the first time, or if you just need to remind yourself that you're a child of God. Because brothers and sisters, the love of the Father is never ending. It's always freely there for you. There are no challenges this week. Just go and live a life as a child of God. Amen.